the Essex class would be the most produced class of fleet carriers in history. Their predecessors, the Yorktowns, were good ships. But due to some compromises by the Washington Naval Treaty, there were some issues in some aspects. In the late 1930s, as various powers started to withdraw from the treaties, the United States Navy was able to have new ideas in design for optimum protection of their ships. Compared to the Yorktown class, the Essex class was over 18 meters longer, almost 3 meters wider, and displaced around a third more. Two elevators were placed on the deck with a third deck H elevator around midships on the port side. Originally, only one was ordered, but after the start of World War II, two more were added. Once France fell, eight more were added to the list. After the attack on Pearl Harbor, two more were ordered. As the war went on, another 13 were added to the list. In 1945, six more were ordered, but later cancelled, along with two of the prior ordered ships. Their most obvious change between the Essexes and the Yorktowns was the redesign of the island, as well as four twin 5-inch 38 caliber dual-purpose guns, two in front and two aft of the island, their protection at the deck edge elevator. Torpedo defense was longer and wider to improve protection. Even though these ships are all under the Essex class, there were some changes between the ships. The largest change was the longer bell subclass, also known as the Ticonderoga class. Combined with a shorter flight deck, multiple anti-aircraft guns could be added to provide better protection. With the exception of Bonhomme Richard, all of ships started in 1943 and later were long hauled. Essex herself was completed without catapults to speed construction. Yorktown, Intrepid, Hornet, Lexington, Bunker Hill and Wasp were completed with only a starboard side flight deck catapult. The rest were completed with both a starboard and port side catapult. A hangar deck level catapult was originally played to most early ships. Yorktown, Intrepid, Hornet, Flankern and Bunker Hill had them, but the rest never got them. One hangar was placed, and each could carry up to 100 aircraft of various types. An SK and SC air search radars were added. Two SG surface search radars would also be fitted, along with two Mark IV fire control radars, and later units would feature a pair of Mark 12 fire control radars and a pair of Mark 22 height finding radars. Armament consists of 12 5 inch 38 caliber dual purpose guns from 32 up to 72 40mm Bofors and from 55 to 76 20mm Orlikans. Propulsion was composed of Westinghouse gear turbines connected to four shafts and eight boilers were also added given the speed of 33 knots. Designations would be from CV9 up to CV47. First units would join the Pacific Fleet in 1943 along with the Independence class light carriers. 14 Essexes fought in World War II. First combat missions were training raids against Japanese-held Marcus Islands and Wake. In early November, they raided Rabaul. In mid-November, they covered the invasion of the Gilberts for the rest of the year. On December 4th, Lexington was hit aft by an aerial torpedo that badly damaged her steering gear. Repairs would be completed in late February 1944. In January 1944, they covered the invasion of the Marshals, and in February, they took part in the truck raid and following the raid on the Marianas. On February 17th, Intrepid was hit by an aerial torpedo that damaged her rudder. Repairs would keep her out of the war until early September. In mid-March, Essex was sent back for an overhaul. In June, they covered the liberation of the Marianas and fought the Japanese at the Battle of the Philippine Sea. Then they covered the invasion of the Palaos, while Yorktown was sent back for an overhaul that would last until mid-November. In October, they would cover in the invasion of the Philippines. This included the raids on Okinawa and Taiwan, and the Battle of the Leyte Gulf. Off Taiwan on October 15th, a bomb landed on Franklin, but was quickly patched up. Then on October 30th, Franklin was hit by a kamikaze. The plane ran through the flight deck and started fires. The prayers would last until mid-March of 1945. On November 5th, Lexington was hit by a kamikaze, which badly damaged her island, and repairs would last three weeks. On November 25th, Essex was hit by a kamikaze and would need three weeks to repair. In the same day, two kamikazes hit Intrepid and also sent her back until mid-March in 1945. The rest would cover the liberation of the Northern Philippines into the start of 1945. This would include raids on the South China Sea. On January 21st, Takanderoga was hit by two kamikazes. First crashed right through the flight deck and exploded in the hangar. The second hit the starboard side next to the island. Repairs put her out of action until late May. In February, they covered the invasion of Iwo Jima. While in port on March 11th, Randolph was hit by a kamikaze and repairs would take three weeks. In March came raids on the Japanese home islands and Wasp was hit on March 15th by a bomb which caused a large fire. 
Three days later, Yorktown was hit by a bomb that blew two holes in her hull. On the next day, March 19th, Franklin was hit by two bombs, both penetrated her flight deck and exploded. Armed and field aircraft added to the firestorm. Listing 13 degrees, burning, and nearly a third of her crew killed, she managed to sail to the east coast with a speed of 15 knots. She never re-entered active service. At the start of April came the invasion of Okinawa, and on April 7th, a kamikaze hit parked aircraft on Hancock, starting a large fire and repairs would last until the end of June. On April 16th, a kamikaze hit Intrepid, starting fires in the hangar. Repairs would keep her out of the war. On May 11th, Bunker Hill was hit by two kamikazes that detonated her armed aircraft. Heavily damaged, she sailed to the west coast, was repaired, but just like Franklin, she never returned to service. On June 4th, the fleet sailed into Typhoon Viper, a storm so strong that it snapped the further 25 feet of Hornet's flight deck, sending her back for repairs. After World War II, these ships would receive newer equipment and aircraft. During the Korean War, 11 of these would assist in attacks on ground units. Major modifications would take place, mostly to the bridge and the flight deck. The most obvious change was the angled flight deck for landing and launch operations in the same time. 13 of these ships would take part in the Vietnam War, but because of their inability to support the newer aircraft, they would be used as helicopter carriers and anti-submarine platforms. A number of these class would also serve as NASA's space flight program, as recovery ships for manned and unmanned space capsules. Most of the class would be scrapped in the 1970s, with the exception of Lexington, which served until 1991 as a training ship, the Oriskany, which was scuttled as an artificial reef in 2006. Yorktown, Intrepid, and Hornet would join Lexington as a museum ship across the United States.